seen you guys in the New Yorker, Esquire, and Complex. She had the Caribbean flesh. It was a natural, like, <laughs> she can't miss. Did you know how to do all of that? Or were you learning as you were going? Learning, learning as we were going. Who's your favorite couple other than yourselves? <laughs> Hey family, it's Carlos Watson. Got a wonderful show for you today. Mike and Nicole Nicholas, they run one of the coolest restaurants in the world. It's called Aunts and Uncles. It's in Brooklyn. It's all kinds of delicious, but get this. It's not just Caribbean food. It's plant-based Caribbean food. Everybody's going wild for it. It's only been open a year, but you're hearing everyone talk about it. Now you get to meet the couple and you get to see their love story. Thank you to me. What? Saying so were you on FaceTime? Yeah, no, she's calling me right. <laughs> oh, Hello. How's it going? Good, how you doing? Hi. You know what, I love a couple that laughs together, that smiles <laughs> together. That's, Cause you know what, that's what you need to see off camera, like what people are like, that's good. He just will take the wrong time to give me a joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Mike, tell her it's never the wrong time for a joke. Never the wrong oh, time man. for a smile. Never, never. never. And, and are you guys in the restaurant today, or where are you today? We're home today. Okay. Not too far from the restaurant, so it's like, it's literally a stone's throw from the restaurant. <laughs> you guys started just last year, or, or has it been longer than that? We opened October 2020. You guys were not afraid, right in the middle of pan. You like, the pandemic. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's crazy because, like, um, for her birthday, October of 2019, I gifted her the keys to the space, and she's like, are you crazy? I'm like, <laughs> maybe, right? Yeah, yeah. But we thought we were going to be able to, like, open it up in, like, March of 2020, you know, so May at the latest. It took a whole year to build that whole place out. So many things had to be repaired, just like... And we had to put our own plumbing put our own electric, like everything. Did you know how to do all of that? Like, or were you learning as you were going? Learn learning as we, as we were going. And Learn. that's like, we went through two contractors. The first contractor, it was a disaster. Yeah, we ended crazy. up with the second one. And then it was just the two of us. And for quite some time, there was no one, like it was stop work order, so no one could work. So at some point we were just like, listen, we're this is almost, we're in our second year. And we just went in there on, on our own and yeah. kind of did a lot of the work ourselves. Yeah, congratulations to you both. How did you guys meet? I, I love love stories. I'm a romantic <laughs> at heart. Don't tell anybody. I may not look like a romantic, but I'm a romantic <laughs> at heart. Good. So I love, I call people's uh, When Harry Met Sally story. So what's your When Harry Met Sally, When Mike Met Nicole story? We have a mutual friend um, that Nicole used to work with and throw parties with. And when I moved back from Florida, he wanted to throw my birthday party. So he flew Nicole in from Toronto. We met then, we met prior um, at another place where I used to work as well, just like in passing, like, hello, my name is. And then we reconnected then at the event. And then I um, became like a certified event, like wedding planner type situation at that time. And he did graphics as well. So when I was looking for someone to do like my business cards, they were like, oh, you gotta go to Mike. So. It just, you know, we connected again through that and just an email, just really good conversation. And we've been together ever since, I guess you can kind of say. Now, Mike, when did you know this was gonna, this was gonna happen? This was gonna be the real thing? We connected via email, like, <laughs> like you said. And then, you know, just in conversation, I'm like, wow, the conversation is really, really good. So I'm like, we gotta kind of like connect and just meet up, right? So we came over for like wine and cheese. And it was like, that was it. That, that, Cause we sat down here in my apartment and it was like, I felt like it was like for like six hours yeah. just talking. I'm like, nah, this is it, done. <laughs> so we were only together for like a year and a half before we got married. And we about to celebrate our 11 year anniversary next week. Yeah, so we'll be together 12 years next week. So you guys are doing it all, 12 years, ringing the bell at the New York Stock Exchange, right? <laughs> yes. How did that happen? Wow, um, we had some, well, we have like, a friend at Amex and um, well plugged us in with Amex to do like a commercial at our shop. And then that spawned into another commercial and then they asked us to be like ambassadors. So then we were doing that and then they were just like, I don't know, they love you guys so much. They want you to ring the bell on our behalf. I said, what? Yeah. I mean, that is, you guys have gotten crazy love in a year. I mean, you guys have had pieces. It feels like everywhere. I've seen you guys in the New Yorker. I've seen you guys in Esquire. I've seen you guys 
and complex. You know, when you look at communal eating and food, it's such a beautiful thing that it brings everybody together. We always had a knack for bringing like the gangsters and the hipsters together. <laughs> yeah. It's been years, we've been doing it for years. The times, yeah. we just got a full spread in the times. People who have just frequented the cafe that we never knew what their positions were, I guess, and just kept us in mind. And it's just, they, you know, reaching out like, hey, I've dined there, or hey, I, you know, I love your this. And by the way, can we film here or can we do, mm -hmm. you know, so I guess it's just the frequency and the energy, you know, without even knowing. Hey, how did you guys decide to mix Caribbean food with kind of more healthy food? Because again, my dad's from Jamaica, so I'm thinking curry goat and oxtail, rice and peas and all this. I'm not thinking that hearts of palm stuff. I saw you in the video. <laughs> Nicole, you're not gonna fool me. I saw you. How did you guys decide to mix those mix, mix those two worlds together? Oh man. So we've been cooking together for a long time. As we've been together, we've always been in the kitchen cooking together. And we had like different um, ventures. You know, we had something called Fix Me a Plate where we would like cook lunches and deliver them, you know, to people. We'll post it on our Instagram and they're like, yeah, we want this one, we want that. So we'll deliver it. But it always had a Caribbean flair. She had the Caribbean, she, she just had the natural, her mom is Trini, like it's a natural, like, <laughs> like, like, you know, she can't miss, like, right. you know, just brown sugar and water tastes amazing. <laughs> so there's a lot of our favorite dishes that we like to, you know, to eat. But then when we, when we went plant-based, we had to like leave a lot of that stuff alone. So we're trying to figure out like, like how do we still give them that? By the way, plant-based, that's like a sneaky phrase for those of us that eat meat. I mean, I like the way you guys like rebranded the neighborhood, call yeah. it vegetarian and vegan, plant-based. It's more so just not wanting to let go of those flavors and that taste and, you know, just anything that you have that doesn't have any spice or seasoning, it's nothing. It doesn't taste like anything. Yeah, we learned that texture and flavor is where it's at. So once we can match the texture, and we give it the flavor that we naturally have, the brown sugar, <laughs> we're good. You know but, what but, I mean? But Mike, like, hang on a second, because I want to be healthy, but I love meat. I mean, I do. I love meat. And and so how did you decide to go without meat? What made you make that decision? Was it a spiritual thing? Was it a health thing? Was it a, a taste thing? A lot of the stuff that we ate, traditionally, is not always that good for you. It's all like the curry goats and the oxtails and the, the, the ground provisions. It was all good at that time, especially when you like working it off. You know what I mean? Like if you're if you like outside and you work burning that stuff off is different than you just sitting on the couch and you consuming it and you just go get in the car and or go lay down and, and that just builds and, and it adds up and you just taking in more than in, than you're releasing. So it doesn't work out, right? And that's where the, the diseases start to come in and harbor. How much weight did you lose? I was 242, so you could say like 42 pounds. You know what, that was my number. I, oh. I, got, I got to a place, Nicole, I was 242. I mm -hmm. tried to go running with my buddies. I mm -hmm. couldn't, I ran a block. I literally had to sit on the side of the thing and my best friend sat next to me and said, we gotta do something, this isn't good. And so I had to change my eating, I had to start exercising more and I dropped, I dropped basically 40 pounds. This was a number of years ago. But so I appreciate what you're saying about how that can change your life. It's not necessarily about even being vegan or plant-based, it's just about being mindful about your body and, and it talking to you, you know? Like 42-year-old um, Nicole is not 16-year-old Nicole, so I just have to be super mindful about what I'm, what I'm taking into my body and just making sure that I'm taking time for myself to move and, you know, a lot of things can be going on. And yes, we have a cafe, it's new, and we have to be open every day. But at the same time, just we need time for ourselves to make sure that we're healthy. Or else if we're not, who's going to do the work? Talk to me a little bit about both of you coming up. So, Mike, if I had met you back in the day, Mike's 16, Carlos is 16. What was Mike <laughs> like? Is Mike quiet? Is he loud? Where is he? Who's Mike if I'm meeting him when uh, we're both 16? Always been a class clown, but it was, but I always did good in school, so I always it always balanced out. But 16, it was a fun time for me though, because 16, I was actually like doing my internship at Loud Records, so I was like doing like street promotion for like Wu Tang, Mob Deep, Ghostface. It was like that was like a fun time. Nicole, I need to go to 16 year old Nicole. Now, first of all, is she in the U.S. or is she in what we call the world next door? Oh, Canada. She's still in the world next door, in high school, playing the flute. Catholic high school at that. 
managing at a retail store, um, pretty much not even knowing that where she'd be now. Tell me a little bit about, about both of your parents. My parents separated when I was a teenager, but um, definitely, I guess both of them were very resilient, you know? Um, they play a huge part of, of where I am now. You know, I, I cooked a lot with my father, you know, and my mother, they were, very, they were entertainers. We always had our, our house filled. We had like a disco ball. My father was a DJ, like records and, and things like that in the home. My father was super stern. So him, I know like it, when it's not time to play, you know, it's get that done. So I have that about me too, <laughs> where I'm gonna finish it no matter what, you know, yep. no matter how tired I am. And my mother was soft, like she was super loving and super welcoming. So she always made sure that, you know, you felt good when you're in her, in her, in her space. My mom was the same way. Nicole that you yeah. described. She was also the favorite aunt, I think, too. <laughs> and, and Mike, what were your parents like? Well, my parents, they separated when I was way younger. So I grew up with my mom. Only time I get to see my dad was when I was going to St. Lucia for the summertime. So my mom used to send me to St. Lucia for like the whole entire summer. From like <laughs> the last day of school to like Labor Day. <laughs> my mom had like five sisters and six brothers. So we come from a very large family. So I felt like my family was just, I don't know, it's just so strong because it's like my grandparents and then it was like all my aunts and all my uncles. I got a hundred cousins, <laughs> you know? So like my mom had a lot of help and support from, from them, you know what I mean? Um, Cause she also had two younger daughter, uh, younger daughters. So I have two younger sisters. So she was able to like hold it down for the three of us, you know? Wait, 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 hold on. Now, is that why you named the restaurant? aunts and uncles? Because like they were our cool parents, right? So we have, you know, you have your favorite aunts, your favorite uncles that you would lean to and you learn from and you get gifts from and get sleep over and, you know, like they teach you things, you know what I mean? So it's, um, they listen to you. And I just, uh, I just, we wanted to, you know, make sure we pay tribute to them. Hey Mike, tell me a little bit about the uh, fashion and how you've moved into clothing, or it sounds like if I hear you right, Nicole, you were in the clothing even before you started doing the restaurant. Is that right? I went to school in Florida uh, for broadcast communications and then ended up getting my degree in visual effects and motion graphics. So doing a lot of computer stuff and on air graphics and things of that nature. But then in, in process, I was like, you know, you learn Photoshop, you learn Illustrator. I was just doing graphics and then some graphics that I was doing, I was like, it looked good on a t-shirt. So I just started like ironing on stuff and then passing along with some of my friends. I got my internship with Kat Brown, who's cutting all of like Little X and Diddy videos, like all the Sean Paul era videos. So I just started, like he had me do like custom designs for like Kanye and Usher. Right when I graduated college, I said, you know, I had a bunch of job offers and I said, you know, I think I'm gonna just ride this wave. So a couple of my buddies, we went to the magic show did like over a hundred something thousand dollars in order. So I said, all right, well, this is it. This is it. <laughs> Done deal. Solidified. When you think about the most interesting things you've learned in business, if you were trying to go back and like teach a class now on business, because both of you are serious entrepreneurs now, what would be the top two or three things if you were being real, real with your younger self? What would be the top two or three lessons about business you'd share? One thing for sure would be about like accounting, um, you know, making QuickBooks like as part of like as as cool as the creative part is. Um coming as a creative, you know, sometimes they always say, oh I'm I'm on the creative side, I don't do it with the numbers. No, you gotta make sure the numbers are cool too. You know what I mean? Like be, get cool with the numbers. Like get cool with Excel the same way you get cool with Photoshop. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Nicole, what would you say if you were talking to your younger self, a soon to be entrepreneur, what would you what would you tell her? Here's what's gonna surprise you. Like if I could tell my younger self one or two things about business, here's what I would tell her. I would probably say an idea is an idea, but the passion behind it is what you really have to understand about whatever it is you wanna do. Because when you start that idea, it's not just the idea, there's so many things that need to help that work. And you can be uninterested in them. You know, it can become um, way more hard than you had ever thought. But if you have that passion, then, you know, nothing that comes about is hard. It's just, you gotta do what you gotta do and you need to get there. This is what you want, so you're gonna go for it regardless. Nicole, I see you got FAMU on your shirt there, and I feel like HBCUs are finally having their moment. What's up with that? Did you go to FAM or what happened? Mike designed this, actually. 
Mike designed this for FAMU. Nice. We got selected by Bleacher Report along with Chris Paul and his stylist Courtney Mays. And they have a, um, a organization, Social social Change, along with Carmelo and D-Wade. So they, they did some designs with about six different HBCUs. So they gave us FAMU, so I just designed like the merchandise for the school. Hey guys, as we wrap up, I want to do what I call rapid fire with you two. Can I, can we do that? Let's go. <laughs> Who's your favorite couple other than yourselves? Who's your favorite couple? I think my favorite couple is like my uncle Gary and my aunt, um, Angela. It sounds strange. We're our favorite couple, you know, uh, for me, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Look, all right, your favorite movie? Just watch American Gangster the day. Your favorite musician? Who's your favorite musician? It's hard because it depends on the mood that I'm in, you know, because um, there's people like Bob Marley that'll keep you in a certain tone, right? Mm -hmm. Jay-Z, where he just, he speaks to us, like, as far as, like, especially being from Brooklyn, like. Who was your favorite basketball player, too? Oh, definitely Michael Jordan, 100%. <laughs> Would they end up doing a life of, uh, a movie of your life, who should play you? That's a good question. That's a good question. I, I would actually, I would like to see like some raw talent, like raw talent. Cause you know, some of the best movies is like people who didn't have a lot of like, um, you know, you know, uh, acting, like big acting careers. And I just want to see like some raw, maybe somebody from like Flatbush. What's your favorite dish at the restaurant? What dish do you both love at Aunts and Uncles? I'm going to the Crying Ryan. I love that. We named it after our nephew. It's the whole cauliflower roasted in like a nice spicy peanut sauce. And it's magnifique. Nicole, where are you going? Yeah, it has to be the taco. Cause I put a lot of work into trying to season that beyond ground meat, like the Jamaican <laughs> beef, <laughs> you know? And it just took it to another place. It's one of our first menu items. And every time people try it, it surprises them. So yeah. Hey, enjoy this ride. Uh, it's good to see you both. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you and bless you both. Appreciate you. Take thank care. you. Okay, be safe. See you again. Sure. Hey, hope you enjoyed Mike and Nicole. I love their love story. I love the way they were towards each other. Who would know that they both call themselves introverts? I love that. And I love that they built the thing with their own hands. There's something kind of beautiful about that. Wishing them all kinds of good success. Can't wait to see where it goes from here. And guess what? I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Hey, if you're enjoying the Carlos Watson Show, remember there's more good stuff here. Go on YouTube, get yourself a little bit more. We'll see you soon.